Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, good morning and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at McLaren Manchester where there are no prizes for guessing what car is lurking beneath the cover in the showroom. Now you might be wondering why am I picking up the Senna again after the delivery of the Christmas present at the MTC, the McLaren Technology Centre. Well after that the car actually needed to come back to McLaren Manchester to complete its shakedown. I showed you parts of the PDI, the pre-delivery inspection, but most importantly to actually get registered so that it would become road legal. Now today I'm going to head inside, officially take delivery of the car. It will become my Senna as of today. So let's wander up, have a look in the showroom and pull the covers back. To begin outside, we have some pretty nice cars greeting us today. The bright blue 720S, we have another grey 720S, the 570 GT. McLaren Manchester have this new showroom shared with Rolls-Royce Motorcars Manchester. So you've got a Phantom 8, you've got a brand new Rolls-Royce Cullinan as well outside. But in here, in the showroom windows, where we're greeted by another fantastic lineup, the orange and purple 720Ss upstairs, a very nice Mirawai white 600LT, and just there, under the cover, is my Senna. So let me head round, head on inside and go get those covers pulled back to check this out. This is now the new McLaren Manchester showroom. My previous cars, the 12C, the 650S, the 675 Coupe and the 675 Spider, came from the old showroom but I think it might be the first time that I've actually been here with my video camera and of course the first time one of my cars has been inside. So let's open up the doors and head on in to go and take a look at this. Hi there, good morning, how are you? Welcome, I'm very well. Thank you very you much. This morning. Uh, very excited right now. Excellent. Head straight on in. Yes, come on through. Thank you, so welcome to McLaren Manchester and here we are, the Senna under the cover, under the silks, waiting for that to be pulled back. I think it looks like it's also sitting down in race mode at the moment. We'll be able to see that on video. Good morning, Saika, how, how are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Lovely to see you. Excited? Of course, cannot wait for this. In a moment, we will pull back the covers and get a good look at the old MSO Cerulean Blue, which, by the way, I love that you still have the sample up there at the very back on the wall. <laughs> we're going to take a look at that in a moment and some very nice cars around too. Here we have a 600 LT, went out for the launch of this at Hungara Ring, but this is Mirawai White, which is a very metallic, uh, slightly blue tinted silver. The wheels are cool with a diamond uh, cut two-tone and the blue calipers, that's very, very nice as well. So I think before we can pull these back, there is normally a little bit of paperwork to do, so we will head in and go and get that sorted first. I think actually maybe I'm not going to bring the camera in for this bit to fill a couple of forms in I think and the like and then uh, we'll head back out and get those covers off. This is now all done. We've also got here the instruction book and the key for the car which is made by MSO with the blue carbon and the silver Senna logo to match with the brake calipers. We saw that at the uh, first delivery and also at the PDI. And a big thanks to McLaren Manchester, thank you, for what is in here. This is a personalized helmet that matches with the car and even the bag on the outside has the embroidery of McLaren Manchester, the Senna logo, and my car's number, number 281 out of the 500. But I'm gonna save this to show you the helmet in future when I get to take the car out on the track. So I look forward to that one. So if you're ready, we will yeah. reveal the car. Let's go and take a look at this. So let me head around to the other side so we can get the big reveal for everybody watching and pull back the silk sheet to reveal the new Shmi mobile here in the showroom. MSO Cerulean Blue is back right here matching with that paint mold and also the car sitting in race mode. It is so low down to the ground. Of course up to this point I didn't pop it into race mode to show you guys but look at the tyres. They are completely up there in the arches and the aero on the center every time. I mean, I've spent obviously a, a few days around the car already, but just to be able to see it again, it's so, so, so crazy. And I'm very, very happy with the choices, the blue carbon. I spent a while going backwards and forwards as to whether I would order that or keep it with the normal exposed black carbon, or even should it be glossy carbon. But I love the contrast between the navy or the blue carbon. They actually do blue or navy carbon, depending which you would like. The contrast with that and the pearl colors of the MSO Cerulean Blue. Of course, also adding the roof snorkel. That was an MSO option, but contrasts really nicely against the gloss black of the canopy. A few people talked about painting 
uh, the A to C pillars, or doing carbon for the roof section as well. But given you have the black glass, you know, we've got the tinted glass roof panels, we've also got the glass door panels, this whole upper section ends up being gloss black as you look at it uh, overall as a car. So that just gives you a touch of colour up at the top, along with the, uh, uh, the darker blue colour, along with the wing. And then, of course, at the front, the nose bridge, which houses where you plug in the trickle charger, and no front uh, boot, no frunk up here, no storage space, just some very large uh, cooling radiators down there at the bottom. And even one detail I really liked that I showed you was how the number plate plinth, the removable plinth, is also blue carbon fibre. Yes, it's not necessarily the prettiest thing at the very front of the car, but it's a legal requirement. You have to have a number plate, and it's not like there's somewhere here to put a sticker or anything very tidy. And also, just have a look through here. This is what I love. Look at that aero. Look at what's going on. Air is going to three different places just through those front areas underneath the headlights and even up there as well between the uh, main headlight and the daytime running light. And the splitter down here is right down on the floor, right down at the very, very bottom. So lots of MSO options, cerulean blue center locks, silver calipers, the paint itself, the tinted carbon, the roof snorkel, having the carbon fiber end plates, also having these aero blades at the front um, down here in carbon fibre. Normally they would be painted in a contrast colour to the car and that's just on the outside. If I come round to the interior, right hand drive of course, UK car, just pop open the door. Inside, more MSO options, the extended full sills, the McLaren logo painted to match the body colour, the carbon upper on the steering wheel with the cerulean blue stripe there as well, also the blue stitching to match with the exterior, the gas struts, I went um, pretty big time with MSO on this one to make a car that would meet my whole specification. You have this driver zone, all black, the Alcantara and the carbon, the black roof areas, but then all the blue touches just to bring a bit of colour in without being distracting. If you overkill it on the inside, it's easy to take your eyes off what you're doing and ultimately it is a track car. It is designed to be focused. So let's close this back down for now. What a thing and how awesome to see it here in the showroom alongside that lovely 600LT2. As you can imagine, with a car like this at the handover, there is a lot to learn, including from the full induction tour that I've just done with Psycho, some details that I didn't know. So we're gonna pick out now some of the, I think, random tidbits? Yeah, some of the highlights. So there are a few service panels on the exterior that we should go through that are yeah. not so obvious. So firstly, we'll start with the one in front here. So this panel, comes off completely and that's where you would screw in the toe and eye. And I find that fascinating actually because you would never realise that that's the removable panel where the towing eye goes because normally on the front of a car you have you know, a flat surface where it will yeah. just have a cover or a cap or something it's but the front, visible, yeah. the front of this is completely open. If you take away the number plate that's all open for the cooling fans and yeah I would never have known that before now. So that's useful to know. Yep. Uh, moving on to this part panel here. So this panel comes up and this will give you access to the charging point, but also some of the uh, reservoirs. So it's about three quarters of the way up and to the left, and you make sure the car's unlocked, and then press in and lift the panel up. And finding the mark where you actually have to press on the car to release that catch. Yes, that's the tricky bit. Sometimes, you know, you just kind of have to remember where it is, but it's about three quarters of the way up and a little to the left. And then under here, I like this actually, this is complete raw carbon fiber. The whole body is carbon, super, super light. And then some fluids and the trickle charger socket. Yeah, so this is where you would plug in the charger and then you've got your um, washer fluid, power steering and brake fluid reservoirs. And to those watching, the trickle charger, why do you plug a non-hybrid car into a trickle charger is basically because it has a lightweight battery. Obviously, you don't want a heavy battery, which means if you don't drive the car for a while, it's going to go flat, it won't be able to start, and then it's very difficult to get to the actual battery itself. So that's why you use a trickle charger in a car like this. And I like how even inside it's finished in the nice blue carbon as well. Stunned. But then so, it's also a challenge to close that. It should just click back into place. Magic. Okay, so Job done. moving around to this side here, this is where the uh, coolant would be filled up and okay. the panel lit, um, opens up from the top and that's a key thing to remember which is different to the other side which we'll come round to. Yeah, um, and I, I can imagine as everyone's going to see that you'd be pressing on here on the end and correct. get a little bit confused. Yeah, so, so. The, the way to kind of remember it is that you would all always fill up with petrol on the passenger side. Yeah. So you probably won't ever have to. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed. So the next panel I'm going to show you is where you would fill up the oil. And yeah. to get to that panel, there is a special tool. Yeah, because you, you can't open 
the the rear of this at all can you the glass doesn't open nothing like that no, so anything like that would have to be done inside the workshop mm -hmm. so there's no access to any part of this here okay um, to get access to where you fill the the oil is literally that cap there okay but the tool for that lives inside of the car in a little tool kit which lives behind your seat yep so down behind the driver's seat we have the tool kit with the warning triangle and a very nifty tool you will recognize this. I do, from the 675, just like it was used to open up the um, uh, engine bay cover on that car. Yeah. So what does it do? It goes into that. So it goes into this little keyhole here. Yeah. Turn it clockwise oh, and, and it, it pops, pops open. open. Easy enough, good to know. That's one of those things you'd be standing there. Like, how, does it, how do you do yeah. this? And do you just close it back down again? Literally just pop it closed, that's it. Magic, nice okay. and easy. And then moving around to the passenger side of the car, like I say, on the side and that's where you would fill up the fuel nice and easy normal exactly the same being careful because you gotta lift the nozzle over paintwork you always get nervous doing that although it will have paint protection film on it so that won't be a problem 98 ron and all the tire pressures in there too so okay can i take a seat inside let's <laughs> come around i'll need to slide the seat back first so that it does have some catches to tie it down. It's a, a manual seat, lightweight bucket. So slide that back, click it into place. I'm going to grab on here to hold, to stand in. There we go. So, a nice full tank of fuel. Thank you very much. So one of the first things that people tend to find a little bit tricky is where to pull the door down. Yeah. Um, and you literally just kind of go for it's the here. if you like. Because you can't see it from your seating position. You can't see the grab handle. And you don't want to pull on the gas strut or something. So you put your hand in here, pull it down. And it has soft clothes, which is very nice. So fully charged, 17 miles on the Odo from the shakedown. So the other main thing to know as well is that the controls move with your seat so have you, as you move forwards these will move with you so you're not having to kind of reach backwards to put it into drive or reverse which are really cool quick question does the track telemetry uh go onto a usb that you plug in there that's right yes that, and we've got all the cameras fitted yeah. as well inside the car which is really cool and then the good old confusion with all the buttons on the roof. Yeah, so this is a kind of spaceship kind of feel, I guess. Um, and that's probably the, the main difference when you get into the car, it's kind of figuring out where everything is. So yeah. you've got your start, stop, race activation. You've also got mm -hmm. the door release and the window controls in here yeah. as well. Okay, can I start it up quickly? Go for it. Cheeky first start. So it tells us we're in race mode, race mode selected, suitable for track only, do not use on the public road. <laughs> Ensure direct ground clearance. So this is, so to keep it in race mode, you have to press and hold this button, and then it will stay in race mode. Oh, the screen folds down, or we can go back to the other screen. A lot of information, that's just, I hope you're not bored of the folding screens yet from the 720s, no, still good fun. <laughs> and then your normal active dynamics is here. Yeah. Does this work like the 720S that it's normally in normal mode as opposed to comfort mode? When it's when it's not active, when it's not in race, it works the same as 720. Okay, yeah. so so you then would active enable the active dynamics panel and yeah. go into either comfort or yes. track depending how you want it. Yeah. And then here the track telemetry, the variable drift control, which you would enable by uh, where is the traction control button? Oh, I've got to work this out. Oh, it's here, of course. Buttons to learn. No. Ah, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Activate variable drift control. Not inside the showroom. <laughs> this is where you select the angler slip. This is really cool. Yeah, that's going to be fun at some point to experiment with. Okay, so before we uh, fill the showroom with fumes, we'll switch that back off. I think that's a, a couple of bits of information. Thank you. To step out then release that button. You can use your elbow really to push the door up. And now this is where there's quite a small gap to climb out through. There's that little plaque which tells me which car number mine is. <laughs> Exit the car for the time being. We'll have to put the tool back in there. But again, like on the bag for the helmet, number 281. Awesome, well, very cool. So I've got to work out the best way to close it from the outside. Let the soft close do its thing. Now I know it's 
doesn't have paint protection film in full. It does have the EPF on the vulnerable areas, which is the most important bit. And we're just going to take it at 30 miles an hour down the road to drive it just a couple of miles. Hopefully, uh, just get a feel for what it's going to be like when the car is completely ready. For now, though, it's time to shuffle it out. You can see it's come out of race mode. The suspension is lifted up. Then it'll be time to get it outside into the daylight. And look at it now going into lift up mode compared to earlier actually see the hydraulic suspension rising and then the splitter is so much higher so that it connects it out over difficult ramps because the front end is quite long if you think about it from front axle forwards Leave it in there just look at how open it is underneath on this side we have a chrome blue 458 and on that side we have the center emerging with its running lights on still with the lift system up at the moment this thing is absolutely ridiculous Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Wow. This is crazy. All right then. Yeah. Thank you very much. Woo. Key time. Let's go. Thank you very much for everything. Very welcome. And uh, yeah, let's take this out and see what it's like. Here we go then. I'm going to start getting used to that. You guys come along too. All right. So a seat here inside the center. Button on the roof. Let's get it started up. There we go, so we have the lift system up at the moment. We're into gear then, so we're in drive. Handbrake automatically releases, we have the lift up, but off we go for the first time ever driving this car out towards the road. We're insured, we're registered. This is the Shmi Mobile. It's so raw and rumbly inside, just a deep, proper noise. And um, yeah, I'm gonna wait a moment. I'm just not, not gonna take any, uh, any chances here. We're literally brand, 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 brand new. I think we're going to be joined by the guys behind as well. And then uh, it's time to go. You know where this is getting even better? They're following in a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. I'm not sure if you can see that through the view of the engine bay. You can just catch the grill, maybe in the side mirror. We've got a bit of traffic. As soon as the traffic has passed, we will be able to head out on the road. And clearly this is causing quite a scene already. Um, there's a learner driver coming. I would not want to be a learner driver on the road anywhere near a car like this. That would be terrifying, but we can now head on out. Here we go. First road, bit of driving, first mile, can I call it that? Wow, it's loud, it's rumbly, it's raw. Lower the lift system, I've got a stalk on the right. Press it down to get the lift system lowering. You can hear a lot of noises in here. I'm conscious also that it's a very big car, but any little things on the road, let's just hope at this kind of speed, 25 miles an hour, they're not gonna cause any stone chipping or anything like that. The colour in my mirrors, it's a, it's a beast, I can see it everywhere I look. But this is literally the first mile out on the road, driving in this car. Ooh. Nervous, butterflies, excitement, and we've got stop start, of course. That feels totally wrong in this kind of car. You've got the button here to stop that, auto stop start, turn it off. Actually, you might leave it on, and it will presumably stop itself again the next time we come to uh, zero miles an hour. It just feels crazy, the bucket seats. This is totally ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. I'm driving Senna for the first time and there's a Cullinan behind me. Just a few miles around the block just to get a little feel for it before it goes to Topaz. This just doesn't feel right. This car would be more at home on a proper racetrack than just cruising through Wilmslow here on our way towards Alderley Edge. Just about three or four miles in each direction. Just to get a first sense of it before it's being worked on for the detailing and PPF for a while. What? What is this? What is going on? Amongst normal cars, it must look totally unreal. We're coming now towards the town of Alderley Edge then. So I've literally never been here in my life, but one of the benefits from where we came is that you don't have to go particularly quick. Just got spotted from the side of the road already. I think it's one of the hot spots of, oh, DB11, very nice. This is one of the hot spots of nice cars in the country coming up through here. Um, so Senna is actually probably quite normal. We just heard that Ollie Webb got spotted in his 600 LT as well this morning, so he might be about to. Yeah, there are some cameras. <laughs> Lots of photos gonna be taken, I think, now. <laughs> that happened very quickly. Well, these guys are the first people who have actually taken photos of this Senna out on the road. With a column right behind it. It's literally still right behind us. This is amazing. That is the bodyguard of bodyguards. <laughs> I can see an AMG GT. Is that a GTR? 
Very nice, very nice. Wide, looking good. It is a GTR. Satin black Magno. Okay, so this is my first ever visit here. We've had a DB11 and a GTR already, and we've just arrived. So I get the point that there are going to be a few nice cars around. I've pulled over to take some pictures, so I'm going to have to put the car into race mode. So you press and hold the race button up here, and then it should give us a message, race mode selected. Then you press and hold it again, it gives you a percentage chart of how complete it is, and then you can see uh, as the car's lowering. Now it does take a while to adjust the hydraulic suspension. You can, of course, unfold the screen where you get some more information. And ESC changes as well, so ESC traction control is now in race, damping's in race. You can see that it's getting lower, 70% or so complete. I've got the track telemetry information up on the main screen, which also shows you your brake and uh, throttle pedal pressure as well. Yeah is quite fun uh, and the g-force sensor in the center so we're now 100% complete aero is in race you get the horizontal rev counter you can pop it back into uh, the track style display screen as well this is carbon fiber all very nice and now we're sitting in race mode to take some pics so let me put the wheel to an angle and uh, jump out take some nice shots we're almost back at the showroom where I've announced on Instagram and social media that I'm going to do a spontaneous little schmeeting gathering uh, to those who are in the area who want to come down. But we are being very well and truly photographed before we've even actually got back to McLaren Manchester. Um, we've seen so many nice cars around. It's absolutely crazy, actually, this area. But we'll get back to the showroom. Hopefully some of you guys have come down and you can take a look at this car. But let's see what happens. To life we go. Watch the cyclist. <laughs> Camera phone out the window. You just hear all of the noises on the top. So there is protection film in the vulnerable areas. We had a good look. So in theory, all of that's gonna be fine. But I wouldn't want to be driving it faster for the risk of uh, any stone chips to the front end. Just down here, and we will be back at the dealership. Here we go then. So past Porsche and Ferrari, where we've got a fair few people about. And then here we arrive, and he's popped the lift system back up, which you do with that back at the dealership where we have quite a few people who are here for the day so in we roll oh that's nice brand new svj just there Ventador svj right so here we come let's pull the car through and i will park it up back here Work out how it works. Okay, park brake is on up here, engine is off. Let's hop on out that way. All right, then, there we have it. What a day it has been coming up to McLaren Manchester to finally collect the car to have a quick induction. I will give you guys a full induction tour of the car as well in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. A big thanks to the team, a big thanks to everyone who came along as well. And of course, I've had the opportunity now to go for a very short drive and take the car out on the roads to discover a little bit of what it's like. But this is just the start, parked in race mode right now. There is a lot more to come, so stay tuned. Bring on the rest of this year. I cannot wait. For now though, what's going to be going to Autosport? The Senna. It will be down there at the live action arena. If you have backstage access or a VIP ticket, you'll be able to join and come and see the car as well and catch up between the shows. But thank you very much for watching as always, guys. That's it for this time. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.